thank you for remembering that there is a story to tell. I don't tell it often. It makes people very angry, but I was there. This happened. On March 16, 2022, I started experiencing regular contractions. I'd had a baby before. I'd had Braxton Hicks before. These were contractions. They were not tens. I could talk through most of them. I could move through most of them. They were contractions. I was told by my midwife to go to labor and delivery. I didn't want to. I knew we weren't really progressing. I knew the contractions weren't getting stronger or closer together, but I was in so much pain for about 72 hours. She told me to go in. Um, they confirmed that I was having contractions, but that because there was no progress being made, there was nothing they could do. Now we knew from my first pregnancy, I'm a human who carries a lot of amniotic fluid. My babies love to swim around in there. And so because she had so much amniotic fluid, my daughter couldn't engage with the cervix. So I, I didn't dilate anymore. We couldn't, we knew we had to break the water. I went to labor and delivery seven times and was sent home seven times without a baby. I never went on my own accord. I was always sent um, for pain management. I was given morphine six times. One of the times I opted not to do it because I didn't like how, um, we can do this. We've done harder things than this. I didn't like the morphine because my daughter stopped moving, um, which is common. Morphine's very strong for babies. It's very strong for adults. And so I didn't, I didn't opt into it every time. And I'm very grateful I was given pain management. I'm under no illusions that every woman in this country is given the same access to pain management. My midwife swept my membranes three times. She wouldn't do it any more than that because it just wasn't doing anything. We knew my water had to break. The high risk doctor would not see us because my blood pressure held steady. In the state of Utah, if the baby's life is not in danger, you cannot induce before 39 weeks. I am not a legal professional. I'm not a medical professional. I have no interest in arguing with anyone on the internet about this. This is what I was told and this is what I was given. We begged for a reason why I had to stay pregnant. They couldn't give us one. They said, just as long as the baby's okay, you have to stay pregnant until 39 weeks. And I said, give me a reason. Give me some reason she has to stay in there. They couldn't do it because there was no reason. She was, she was ready to come out. Um, so I was in labor for 34 days. I had contractions every four to six minutes for 34 days. When she was born, she's a little thing. She's never surpassed 30, 40% of her growth chart because she's just naturally a tiny little thing. She was born at seven pounds, 14 ounces. Her nails were incredibly long. She was covered in hair all over her body. They told me this baby was ready to come out a long time ago. And I said, I know, I told you. When I say I'm passionate about reproductive rights, it's for a couple reasons. One is it's none of my damn business what anyone else does. The second is because my issue was not a legal issue. My issue was a medical issue. And my medical professional could not make the necessary moves due to laws on the books. My care was not catered to me. It was catered to this idea of what equates to a healthy baby and a healthy pregnancy. Um, I told my midwife, you have two patients here. We know she's okay. I'm telling you I'm not. And it was just hang in there. I will never be pregnant again. My therapist has told me I'm allowed to use the word trauma, that that was a traumatic event. 34 days is a long time to be in labor. I'm not the only one this has happened to. I'm not unique, I'm not special. Stuff goes wrong, stuff happens. I'm so grateful for my daughter. I'm so grateful for how safe she got here. Um, I mean, we fought a battle before she even arrived at Earth's side. And I feel that with her. That's true. And it's also true that we could have been treated humanely. Um, reproductive rights are important. And no one has the right to make a decision for us, except the medical professional in the room. Vote.